Hey everyone, welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. And on this episode, I'm gonna teach you how to forage mushrooms. This is actually a really complex topic, so I'm gonna do my best to make it really understandable. I'm a fungal educator from Kitsap County, Washington, and I teach classes at Olympic College. I host forays, I speak at all the fungi festivals. Mushrooms are kind of my passion, and I love teaching people about them, so that's what this channel's about. So make sure to hit subscribe and come with me into Mushroom Wonderland to learn a bit about introduction to mushroom foraging. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. Mushrooms are a pretty complex topic. There's so many types of mushrooms. They like to come out in the rainy season, which is usually fall in most places. Wherever there's rain, there's mushrooms. Some of them eat decomposing matter, and those are called saprobes. And those grow in your garden and on your compost pile and on rotting wood. Another type of mushroom is called ectomycorrhizal and they grow with trees and plants. A lot of the big edible mushrooms like chanterelle, lobster mushroom, matsutake, porcini, hedgehog, these kind of mushrooms exchange nutrients with the trees. And then the other type are gonna be parasites, and everybody knows what that is. Like the honey mushroom, Armillaria species are a pathogenic or a parasitic mushroom that actually can kill trees, and it can be a real problem in agricultural crops. Some of the bright red mushrooms are really good edibles. Some of the most bland white mushrooms can kill you. You have to get to know each mushroom individually to be able to safely identify it and then know whether it's edible or not. Every mushroom is safe to touch and the poison is not gonna go through your skin. There's reportedly one in Japan that can give you a little skin rash. Generally, all mushrooms are safe to pick up. And holding mushrooms is a good way to get over a fear of mushrooms that we were all kind of instilled with growing up here in Western culture. You can even nibble and spit any mushroom in the world as long as you just spit the material out. Just don't swallow it down into your belly. There is one mushroom with red pores called the Satan's Bolete that's said to be dangerous to even nibble and spit. And some of the really spicy lactarius can be a little bit regrettable. And just to be clear, there are far fewer dangerous or deadly mushrooms than there are that are non-toxic or even edible. You gotta be realistic when you go out and you're gonna pick mushrooms for food. Is it slimy? Is it rotten? Is it too little? Is it a weird texture? Um, is it hard like wood? People have a tendency to ask, can I eat it? Can I eat it? Put it in your mouth and eat it? Can you, uh, can I eat it? Can you, can you eat it? it? I, you could, you could, but you wouldn't want to. It's non-toxic, but it's wood. A lot of things you could eat if you boiled it long enough, but for mushrooms, we're kind of looking for nice, soft, fleshy, medium to large size mushrooms. Most people like to carry a basket or a mesh bag to collect mushrooms in. And the basket's a good idea because it keeps your mushrooms from getting too smashed like a bag will do. Um, baskets also have a theory that they could be sprinkling spores as you're walking through the forest. There's no scientific evidence that that's true, but it couldn't hurt. You could use a small little plastic tackle box to collect mushrooms for scientific research, but for food mushrooms, I do like using a basket or a bucket, something rigid. To treat mushrooms like they would fragile produce. So treat them like you would bananas. You wouldn't want them getting smashed and beat around too much. So if we start with a pretty simple mushroom, let's start with chanterelles because a lot of people know what those look like. They're easy to identify and there's not a lot of dangerous lookalikes of the chanterelle. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we have a few different species, but the main one is Cantharellus formosus, the Pacific golden chanterelle. This is a delicious edible mushroom that most people can eat with no trouble. You should cook all mushrooms before eating them. Fungi in general contains a molecule called chitin. That's really hard for humans to digest. So by cooking mushrooms, it makes the nutrients more bioavailable. As I'm standing here talking right now, I see a chanterelle at my feet. Let's have a look at it. So right down here, just barely poking out of the duff I see a mushroom you can see how kind of hard that is to spot and I like to get all the way under here because if I cut it off I would lose a lot of that material look at that you wouldn't have known that all that was under there but you see how the gills just disappear into the stem like that a roughly edge or margin we call that and then they're usually concave so kind of kind of trumpet shape and there you go this one's kind of breaking apart but a beautiful mushroom, like I said, treat them like nice produce and carry them really gently. This is the first mushroom that I ever foraged. My grandma sent me out into the woods to collect some orange mushrooms and I brought them back and I remember her excitement. She made some pot roast with gravy, with chanterelles all in it. It was one of the best things I'd ever eaten. If you're trying a new mushroom for the first time, just try a little bit at first to see if it upsets your stomach. Every mushroom is poisonous to some people. So if you find one, 
look around and you'll often find more of them. The good ones are rarely on the side of the trail because other people find them and pick them first. And as I look down here, kind of in this meadow area, there's more chanterelles growing right here in a little cluster. The chanterelles are kind of growing in this little meadow, but these are really nice ones, little buttons. Some mushrooms, you just specifically look for their host tree and you can find all that information online. Definitely use the internet to your advantage. To find out what kind of trees certain mushrooms grow with, like the Boletus edulis or the Porcini. This is maybe my favorite edible mushroom to find. And up in the mountains, they like to associate with true fir trees like silver fir, noble fir, grand fir. And down on the coast, they like to associate with pine trees. But like with all mushrooms, Whenever I think that I know something for sure, they prove me wrong. As a general rule, a lot of mushrooms you can find just by finding their specific host partner. Probably a good idea to check what the rules are about picking mushrooms in those areas. It's kind of embarrassing if you have a big basket full and the ranger gives you a hard time. Here's another type of mushroom that's really common and, and fairly safe to start foraging with. And this one we call the shrimp russula. Our particular uh, species right here is the russula olympiana. And you can see this purple burgundy wine colored cap, really white gills. This has some blushing. So you see that purple color on the stem. And then if I scratch this, it turns kind of yellow ochre color. And that is indicative of the shrimp russula. Russula, this genus of mushrooms that is unique because the stem will snap like chalk. Um, most mushrooms will just shred and bend. But russulas are a huge genus of mushroom, a mycorrhizal powerhouse living with these trees, associating with them and feeding them, keeping them healthy. This is a well-known edible mushroom. For this mushroom, you have to make sure that the stem breaks like that first. Make sure it's a russula, and then you can just take a little nibble of the edge of the cap. It's actually really sweet. It's very mild. So I determined it was a russula by snapping the stem clean like a piece of chalk. It's got that burgundy color, white gills, and uh, then that blushing stipe with the yellow scratch on it. And it's mild. This is a good edible. This is your shrimp russula mushroom, really common. And make sure it's a russula before you try the nibble and spit test because death caps taste mild. A lot of other poisonous mushrooms taste mild. So do the snap test first, then do the nibble test. The shrimp russula is a popular one because it's big, it's pretty, and people have been eating it for a long, long time. Another really good mushroom to learn to forage right away is gonna be the lobster mushroom because this is a type of russula, like that shrimp russula we looked at. It's got that brittle texture, but it gets parasitized by a secondary fungus called Hypomyces lactiflorum that will change it into this bright orange colored culinary delight. And they are a popular edible and they're really easy to spot and there's nothing else like them in the woods. And lobster mushrooms are really pretty common. And in some areas, I mean, you can't even go without stepping on them. I have personally never met anybody who couldn't eat lobster mushrooms. They're super mild and easy on your system. And that's also another good reason why they're a good one to start with. Don't be eating rotten stuff. Let me just make that clear. Uh, if you eat rotten food, you're gonna get sick and don't fool yourself about values. If you find a mushroom that you're excited to see, but it's past its prime, you're gonna have to leave it behind unless you want a bellyache. And don't go blaming the mushroom that it got you sick. It was your own judgment. Sure, some mushrooms can be slimy, but you can feel the firmness of a fresh mushroom. And if it's really slimy and mushy and kind of limp, then just don't eat it. So get yourself some good boots and some waterproof gear because there's a good chance it's gonna be raining out here in the woods when you're looking for mushrooms because that's what mushrooms love is the rain. And then find one of your local parks that have a nice forest in it and start walking slowly and just observing the forest floor. Be careful not to get lost. It's good to use a tracking app when you go out to keep track of where you are because it's easy to get turned around and mushroom hunters get lost every year. I really think it's a good idea to start at a baseline with some of these really big, flashy, obvious mushrooms that are easy to identify if you're gonna start eating mushrooms that you're foraging and then build from there. Get yourself a good field guide. You could register for my mycology classes at olympiccollege.edu slash continued education or you can subscribe to this channel and I put out mushroom videos every week. If you're interested in psychoactive mushrooms, I post all of that stuff over on my Patreon. So go to Mushroom Wonderland on Patreon and you get to watch all of this exclusive content and a lot of stuff that I can't be posting over here on this platform. Go over to mushroomwonderland.com to get some merch and help support me and Gunner on our mission to educate about mushrooms. 
and I hope that I see you somewhere down the trail. Much love, everyone. Be safe out there.